willow with a new litter just born yesterday Good day, welcome to Art with Alison. I hope that you're all staying safe and that you're all well. I know this is a very difficult time for many and I hope that it hasn't been too hard for you. So my best wishes do go out to each and every one of you. I just thought I'd go through my colours. These paints are Araldo paints which are easily um, found in Australia. I don't know about other countries but uh, I can find these through the Riot Art stores or on, online. It's well worth waiting till Riot Art has half price sales because they do that every couple of months and they are, yeah, then you can get them for half price. So it's certainly worth waiting for that. So these are the, this is metallic treasure. It's basically a nice, nice rich metallic gold. This is metallic fuchsia. See the consistency? So it's fairly thick. They're not massively thick. I actually had to thin these down because I made them up previously, but they were too, still too thick. So you need to you need to be able to move, basically. <laughs> um, let's have a look. This one is metallic ocean blue. It's a lovely colour, that one. And this one is metallic palm green. Gee, that feels. It, it's important to keep your paints of similar consistency, um, except metallics. As long as all the metallics are the same, they usually it's better to keep them a little bit thicker so that you get the actual lines in your painting, as in when you get the lovely lines after doing your pour, sometimes if the metallics are too thin, they just tend to, the metallic just floats along the top. You know, it just felt a little bit too, well, a little, not too thick particularly, but it's just felt a little bit thicker than the others. So, you know, it's, it's people say, oh, well, you know, how much of this and how much of that, but it's really, what you try because each of the paints even of the same brand they come out feeling different some are very thick and some are much thinner all right so this one here I thought I'd try and make up a turquoise with these and so this is a mixture of those of these two together and I don't know if I've succeeded but yeah I guess it's a little bit turquoisey and this this is just ordinary, it's not metallic, this is just Araldo purple. And actually that's the only that's not metallic because this one here is metallic as well. Let's have a look, this one is metallic pearl. So just mix it. I use Floetrol. I only use Floetrol. I don't use water and I don't use any silicon in these paints. So occasionally I, I might and I'll tell you if I do, but normally I don't use those. I just use the Floetrol and I'm really happy with that. A little squeaky puppy. If it squeaks for too long, I might just have to go and see what's happening. All right, just give me a minute. The puppies are only little and they can't, oh, they can crawl around but they're blind and they're deaf. <laughs> and that one was just stuck behind mum's leg trying to get in for a feed and the mother's just lie there. Anyway, I just had to help it over her back leg to where all the others are. Uh, Alright, so yeah, they're all lovely. I love this sort of thick, creamy, Oh, what is it like? It's like, people say warmed honey, but I guess it depends how much you warm honey by. Uh, <laughs> um, certainly a nice thick, thickened cream. Yeah, it's just, just feels really soft and delicate. All right, now I've got here, this is some, what I do, Usually when I finish a pour, I will, I might do other things with it. I might dip some 
things in, some glass domes in to make jewellery, uh, whether or not I do that, I will then, so long as I started off with a, you know, I usually um, will wipe this over with a soft cloth, let it dry just before I do my pour, then I know that this is clean. And even though it might not look clean, but um, it basically is. And then I can scrape up what's on, on the mat and put it in a container. And then, you know, it can just be used for the base coat, basically. Basically a base coat. So that's what I'm going to do today. All right, I'll just get myself organised and back in a tick. Now, as you know, or as you most likely would know, we do use a lot of these paper towels in our painting, but things are fairly scarce at the moment. But even before they were scarce, I did start finding that, um, you know, I might have a scrunched up piece that's got paint all through it, but if you, after it's dried, if you haven't thrown it in the bin, you can just spread them out and, you know, they're okay to, like, wipe off your... your um, popsicle sticks on and stuff like that, wipe, you know, your fingers. I also have a, a damp cloth nearby to wipe my fingers off with. Um, yeah, just ways that you can save. You don't have to go through brand new ones all the time. Just thought I'd give you a heads up on that in case you hadn't thought of it already yourself. Okay, so I'll just layer up my little jug here, just a nice little silicon one. This is a, a 30 by 30 centimetre, so that's 12 inches by 12 inches basically. And on, on the base I've just put some masking tape and some little wooden push pins. The push pins keep it off the, off the surface so that you don't want your canvas sitting in the paint. And it also gives me something to hang on to. So while I'm doing, you know, if I'm doing a, a tilt, if I'm tilting my painting, I'm not having to hold on to it at the top where you go and ruin your painting or even at the sides because you want your sides to have the paint running off on it. So I find that really handy just, and I like to have them in the middle too, not just in the corners because when I've just put them in the corners, like, oh, it's really hard to handle. So when they're in the middle, yeah, it's a lot easier. Anyway, just thought I'd let you know in case you haven't already thought of that. So I'll do this in real time. You don't have to sit through it. You can just go skip along to the next bit if you want. But some people like to see how it's, how it's laid in the cup. I might, may or may not, depends what it happens when I get to editing. I may or may not... Um, just cut out parts of it. We shall see. See if I can think of anything to talk about. Oh, listen to those babies. We've got eight little Labrador puppies. They, there's two blacks and six yellows. With Labradors, they're called yellow, not gold, because the proper name for a Labrador is a Labrador Retriever and of course there's the Golden Retriever so if we, I, I think um, what I've heard anyway is why the Labradors are called yellow and not gold is to say Golden Retriever could be a bit muddled if people were talking about Labrador anyway so they're called yellow <laughs> which some people find strange I might put a bit more of that white against the, oh, let make that pink. So what you have to think about, maybe, now I do love watching Sarah Mac, I don't know how many of you watch Sarah Mac, but if you haven't already, I suggest you look her up because she does fabulous paintings. And what she often does is when she's going to use her white, I've noticed recently anyway, she'll do gold and then the white and then the gold again to seal in the white basically because white obviously if you mix white with red it'll create pink etc etc even though this is already pink um, might not want it to be a pale pink 
and I don't remember if that was the colour I was going to go for before but it is now <laughs> um, and yeah sometimes there's no rhyme or reason but generally speaking uh, there's two ways of doing it I think you either have completely contrasting colours so they will stand out against each other or you have colours that will go nicely together you know, will blend well together like the, the blue and the purple there will look quite nice don't think the purple next to the green is a good idea I um, might actually do the white next to the purple because I don't mind if it does go a bit pink and green like green, I don't think that matters what happened to the aqua? oh it's hidden behind there behind the container of the poured off paint for my base coat. All right, we'll put that next to that one. And then, actually, you know, often goes nicely together is aqua next to purple. I think that's probably plenty for this canvas. Yeah, I must stop. It's hard to stop sometimes because you get carried away with the pretty colours and you go, oh yeah, that'll look nice next to that one. And before you know it, you've got way too much. At least that's what I find anyway. For I know and I find I've got way too much paint for what I need. All right. So, bring this back over here. And I guess I could put that down. I already checked this and it, where did I put the, there it is. It's quite, quite runny, which you either want your base coat to be exactly the same or a bit more runny. Mina Villegas always likes hers extra runny, but other artists don't, so I don't know. Just tr best thing is to practice, 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 and see what you like. And there's a hair there. Probably one of mine, as it's very long. What will I do with it? Can I just drop it on the floor? <laughs> All right. Sorry. Anyway. Um, so yeah, just. Practice, 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 and see what works for you and what you're happy with because different artists like different effects and different results and just got to find what works for you. All right, I'm just going to pull this can of empty paint over. This is something that a lovely lady called Cheryl suggested to me in one of the comments is using something like that to help because I have sore shoulder, etc. Anyway, uh, ring pour. Hmm. I think I've got way too much paint. That's a dog snoring if you're wondering. It's not really an old man in the corner. The purple's taking over, isn't it? And I think I might just stop there because I'm not doing a very good job at that middle bit, but it probably doesn't matter too much if it's going to be wrecked, just does it? You can always wreck it through the middle. <laughs> All right, I'll just give that a little torch.
Right, I might just use the popsicle stick from this colour. No, I won't. I can change my mind if I want. My art I can do what I want. All right, so. Very runny, I think it might be too runny. Maybe it's that base coat being so runny. We shall see. Gee, that purple. Taken over, but it's a pretty purple. All right, I quite like that. Probably lose these bits, but you never know. Until you get there. See now, let's move these things out of the way. Actually, I'll give it another torch. It's quite a few air bubbles. I made the majority of the paint up some time ago, but then when I went to use it today, I decided it was too thick. So I added more float holes. So I guess that would have incorporated some air bubbles. Plus even just the pouring creates air, bubble, air bubbles as it hits the canvas. Alright, if you do it sideways on rather than straight down it helps not to heat the paint too much. You don't want to be burning your paint. Oh, let's put that over there. Quite pretty patterns in the middle. I'll show you. But we shall see. Go to that corner. Over to this corner, it is very runny, isn't it? Maybe it's because that base coat was that much runnier. It's quite pretty, the patterns with the racking, I think. To that corner. So it's good to go back to the middle and then go to what you want. Just helps keep things not too much out of shape. Anyway, we'll, might as well just go over now. Go back to the middle. Now I'll go over to that corner. Just let that run over. Might run down the bottom a bit. Bring it back. So I was talking about holding on to the bottom bits and I was holding on to the side just then. It's a matter of remembering to do it. And to this corner and over back again and I can see something, something there. Just wipe my hands. But one thing you don't want to do is drip paint off your gloves into your painting, which I have done before, as you may have seen. Anyway, should I get most of that off? Right now, where are those tweezers? Here they are. What do we have? One for something. All right, I'll put that in there. That one might have seen its day. I think that's it. Wipe my tweezers clean. 
Don't want the paint drying up on them. That dog shaking itself. Oh, I think that's so pretty. All right, let's do that last corner. Let's go over and over and back. That is so pretty. I might just, I might just let it go over this side a little bit more because there's a gap there. It's, Stretching sat down this corner, it's so pretty like that, isn't it? I think I'll bring it back. Don't want it too different to everything else. But I think I might take it to there and then stretch it back again and see what we can get. By going backwards and forwards a bit, it does often help to help bring cells up, helps to Stretch out parts. All right, now do I want that centered? I think I will. It's also pretty though. It's actually Fiona Art who I got the idea to do the spirals. Thank you, Fiona. I really like that. But yeah, even though that corner's pretty over there, that far corner, I think I have to let some of that go over. I'll do. You hear the puppy suckling? on the other side of the room. Dog shaking itself. Yeah, I live with dogs. <laughs> oh, I think that is so pretty. I've been dying to do this since I've been seeing them getting done. I do highly recommend it, anyone who hasn't done these yet, because it's yeah, it's very rewarding when you do something that you're really happy with. Okay, well, I'll give it a little torch and bring you in for a close-up. That's gorgeous, love it. All right, yeah, I'm just going to push that a little bit further that way. I'm going to be one of these artists, or I am one of these artists, who says, yeah, all done, and then, oh, hang on a minute. Thing is, though, is you have another look at it, and you go, hmm, actually, oh, I do, I do love those colours together, and I just love this wrecked ring pour business. Yeah, makes lovely patterns. And a little bit more. Yep, yeah. happy now. <laughs> Sleeping dogs here. The puppy dog there. Whoopy. Whoopy, whoopy. Hey, gorgeous. <laughs> and then my other puppy who likes to be by my feet while I paint. She's grown into a big dog now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Nala. Hey, gorgeous. 
and the painting yes rather purple she looks I think it looks more purple through here than it really is we shall see stay tuned for the dried result it's quite pretty a few dog noises very light snorer Focus, go to focus, there we are. See those lovely metallics shining. Might give it another torch. You can see some cells there just wanting to come up, eh? it's got the flash on it will be interesting to see like these in what I can see which isn't what I can see not through the viewfinder is the blues are more blue basically I guess it really is blue oh well Let's see what it looks like when it's dry and then again it changes again when you varnish it that is so pretty Oh, I'll just give it a torch and just see if that makes any difference. Give me a tick. Nothing much has happened yet after torching it. That might come up in the next half hour or so. Anyway, you'll see that when I show you the dried results. Okay, well, you know, as is usually said at the end of these videos, um, please subscribe if you haven't already. That's the main thing because we all want lots of subscribers. It does help us on our art journeys. And hey, if you've enjoyed watching this, please give me the thumbs up because I really do appreciate those. And I really, really love hearing your comments. So please let me know what you think. Have you tried this yourself? Has it worked? Have, are you going to try it? What do you think of this one? Etc. Etc. Here we are in the southwest of Western Australia. This is one of my girls, Kiki. Hey, Kiki. And here the painting is in the shade. Some pretty colours in there. And I do like how it swirls around with the wrecked ring pour. I think it's a bit over here actually. See if you can tell, but where are we? This, this colour is just gorgeous. Very pretty. So here it is in the sunshine. So yeah, the gold, the gold does glisten. And even that lovely metallic aqua up there. There's a lot of metallics in here and they are glistening still, even though it hasn't yet been varnished. It's so pretty, those colours.
I live here in the southwest of Western Australia on a lovely big bush block. I do love it here, far away from anyone else. So yeah, I'm in total isolation most of the time anyway. Um, surrounded by state forest. So how good's that? In my opinion. <laughs> okay. All right. So there it is in the sunshine. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Thank you so much to all of you who have already subscribed. I do appreciate it ever so much. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. It is free. And if you've enjoyed this video, please just hit the like button. A thumbs up. That will make me very happy. Okay. So thanks again. And I'll catch you again soon. Okay. Bye for now.